Hi everybody and welcome to a new episode of Ask Tatiana. And here are my new three questions for today. Ellen, thank you very much for your question. Actually, I was asked so many times, why do you speak German? Why do you speak English? Are you not Russian? And, 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 and. many, many questions and everything was uh, really unclear. So I try to give now more or less clear answer. Actually, I can speak four languages, Belarusian, Russian, German and uh, English. I was born in Belarus and we have in Belarus two, officially two languages, Belarusian and Russian. Але гэта вельмі вельмі не звычайна для мяне гаварыць па-беларуску. Апошні раз я гэта рабіла ў школе. У нашай сям'і гэта было не звычайна і мы гаварылі толькі па-руску і мне трэба рабіць вялікія намаганні, каб знайсці как бы найти правильные слова, <laughs> когда я разговариваю по белорусски. Поэтому своим родным языком я считаю русский язык. В нашей семье мы говорили только по-русски. Я могу понимать и э, читать по белорусски, но говорить довольно-таки довольно тяжело. Э, в ежедневной жизни я практически все время пользуюсь русским языком. Э, аба Seitdem ich in 2005 nach Deutschland kam, äh, dazu kam noch eine zweite Sprache zu dem Russischen, und zwar die deutsche Sprache. Und ähm, sie ist bei mir also auf dem gleichen wichtigen Niveau wie Russisch. Und ich brauche Deutsch auch unter anderem, wenn ich Konzerte in Deutschland spiele oder besonders wenn ich Unterricht gebe. Und ich gebe sehr viel Unterricht und ähm, ich mache das dann fast die ganze Zeit auf Deutsch. Es sei denn, dass meine Schüler weder Deutsch noch Russisch können. Um, so, then I need to switch to English. And it's also very helpful uh, when I would like to speak to you, for example, in these videos or uh, when I need to make a Skype lesson and you are coming from France or Netherlands or America. And then, of course, it's much more easy to speak English. But of course, English is not my native language, and uh, but I try to do my best, and um, I really enjoy speaking English. In the last episode of Ask Tatiana, I got uh, one comment from Luca. Luca, I hope very much that you are watching it now, and um, you told that um, that it's very annoying to you and it's very irritating to you when I pronounce and like and and not like and and I was thinking the whole time what what can we do what can we do because of course I don't want you to suffer so much so um, I might have a solution and I thought that if I just would try to speak a normal Russian English with you, that it would work much better now and uh, maybe you will not feel so annoyed and so irritating. Um, probably we can solve this problem and I'm uh, hoping that you can understand me better now, much, much better. So um, please write me uh, what you think about it uh, and uh, Maybe I can do another episode for you uh, in the language that you prefer. Thank you very much, Malcolm, for a good question, because um, actually scales and tremolo are a very tricky technique, but um, you need to be able to play it. And um, of course, it's better when you can play it better than not so good. So. Um, in my opinion, um, I think that scales and tremolo and also arpeggio uh, should be in your everyday routine when you are playing or when you are working on technique. It's really very important. And um, let's start probably with tremolo. Tremolo should be first, it should be fast, 
it should be loud and it should be very regularly. Um, this, if you can reach all these three points and if you can combine them in one, then you will have a perfect tremolo. There are actually there are many many exercises how you can practice it and for sure each teacher will have his own or her own tips and tricks how you can do it. I just will tell you how, how am I working on it and how I was telling I should work on it. So usually when I um, work on tremolo, I take um, a part of any piece that I'm currently playing or that I played before and in my case it's just the tremolo part from my current video from the stream and um, I take this small part, it could be another one, it could be just just open strings, it's not so really doesn't matter, but anyway it should be a part um, where you feel absolutely free with, I mean that you don't need to think what your left hand is doing in this moment, so you should can play it really quite good. Um, I start to play tremolo really very 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 slowly in an absolutely comfortable tempo and I like to use different finger combinations in the right hand. I just show you we start with a normal, with a usual combination when we start with A then go to M and then to I. And I play it very slowly and try to control that each note has the same length and it has the same volume. Very important. And that you do it slowly and then you that you don't try to play it uh, very soft. It's a very typical thing actually it's much easier to play to play tremolo very soft because then you can get more fast but actually it's not the goal and um, you can imagine it's more or less we practicing now we pumping nylon as Cortana would say. So, for example, when you're going to gym and um, you would like to get stronger muscles and you need to do some exercises for it, you will never do it like, like that without any power at all uh, because it's much more easy to do it. No? But you will, not get, you will not catch your goal at the end. So, more or less at the same we have with our fingers and with our smaller muscles. So, when you would like to practice it and you would like to, to be really good in tremolo, you need to play it louder. So your muscles will have more weight and will have more, more work to do. So we started with the usual combination A, M, I. When you feel good at it, you take another one, you start with A finger and then you go to I and after that to M. It looks like that. absolutely sure with the combination that we are doing. You need to be able to control it very good and uh, take care that they, the three of these notes are absolutely similar. And uh, after you figure out how it works, you can raise, raise your tempo up. Uh, so you can get faster. put the goal to play this new combination more or less in the same velocity uh, like you play your usual one. Of course there are still some 
other combination that are waiting for us. Now we start with the M finger, with the middle finger, and go first to M, A, I. and make I M A. And I A M. And so on. No? So you just try to practice each of this combination it uh, why do you need it why you cannot do just on the a m i because um in this case you can uh, make the um the connection from your head to your fingers work much better and um if you will get all this combination quite sure then the usual one the normal one will go quite easy so it's just like um like one way to improve your tremolo. Hi everybody and welcome to Ask Tatiana. I hope very much you are sitting as well and cozy as I do. Here you can ask me all the questions you always wanted to ask me and I promise to answer you as honestly as possible. 